I want to know where they're going to go with actors. What else they want to incorporate and how. Obviously, you're missing a sunscreen. My thing is always, when is a brand going to come up with a sunscreen and what is it going to look like? I really want to know how their sunscreen would look like, how it would feel like, and overall, what they could come up with, especially with both a mineral and a chemical formulation. Looking for that. I'm not saying I manifested this. All I'm saying is that I spoke it into existence. And here we are talking about a sunscreen launch from Glow Recipe. This is their Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen SPF 50 Broad Spectrum. I wanted this. I, I, I really was like, I can see a sunscreen in their watermelon line. I have no idea this is going on. I did have lunch with their founder, one of their founders, Christine, while I was traveling around the US. Great lunch. And I did ask her, I'm like, so what's happening with the sunscreen? And she was very like, I could not clock that she was apparently like lying. This was right around the corner. Corner, but she was just like, we're working on it. Like it's just a very tedious process. But the tea is, I actually did do an ad for this on Instagram. That Instagram video is an ad. This YouTube video, technically I'm not getting paid for. So this review was gonna be a little bit more objective, being a little bit more transparent about my overall experience and thoughts on the sunscreen. But on top of that, I have been using this for a minute. So I'm gonna be sharing my overall experience and thoughts and who I think this is best for. I did also happen to have a meeting with both the founders, Christine and Sarah, and I asked questions and got a little bit of tea on their process of like developing the sunscreen, which to me is always really interesting. So let's get into it. Spoiler alert, this is a combination sunscreen, meaning it has both mineral and chemical UV filters in it. So with that, I'm gonna be talking about my four Bs, beard, beading, beat, and brown skin friendly. Beard, how it wears in the facial hair and hairline. Beading, are there any textural issues and how does it play with other skin care? Beats, does it play well with makeup? Does it affect the makeup wear and application? And then brown skin friendly, is there a white cast? To what degree? For that, I did have a friend of mine, The Melanin Method, AKA Erin, send me some application footage. She's shade Fenty 420. So you can see what the sunscreen looks like and how it applies on a deeper skin tone individual. So let's talk application real quick. This again, I got a couple weeks back. And so for me with the sunscreen, I'm always trying to figure out what does it play best with? How does it apply? I have oily skin, so I just have to factor that into the overall wear of the sunscreen, how it wears throughout the day. For the application footage, you can see on the screen, I both measure this out just to verify. I have a video talking about how much sunscreen I know I need to apply based off my face size. If you want to figure that out, have that up in the card. And then I did also use my little quarter teaspoon measuring spoon just to see how how much that occupied in the measuring spoon. I take the first little amount for the right side of my face. I apply it in and pretty much with minimal work, it works right in. You see no trace of it aside from it does leave me radiant. My tea with this is it's called glow recipe. Like it's the recipe to give you glowing, glistening skin. You're gonna look radiant and this does give you a radiant look. I work it in though, rest of my face without even having to really try. It works into my hairline and my beard very, very easily. And you can see after I let it sit on just the one side, comparing it to the side with no sunscreen, there's no color difference. There's no white casts. Obviously, again I, I knew this when I was applying this on screen that was not my first time trying it out but after I let it set I go in and do the other half let that work in let that set and we are good and you can see just overall I'm glowing I'm glistening worth noting not greasy though I don't find it to be very emollient it's not very greasy it's definitely a lot more elegant for oily skin individuals than the Perito one is that's definitely better for dry skin this one I contend is good for every skin type normal to dry will definitely benefit from this if you have oily skin this is your moisturizer getting to the four B's let's talk about beard as I mentioned minimal efforts. I don't have to really work it into my beard, my beard line usually. I'm like, cause I'm so used to chemical sunscreen, just kind of like very messily slathering them on. I very rarely focus on my beard. And so with mineral sunscreens, I always have this weird line here. My boyfriend always points it out. Don't have that. I mean, you can clock it right now. I'm wearing this underneath this makeup. There's no trace, nothing on the hairy line, nothing weird with the beard. Very, very elegant considering again, this does have zinc oxide, which I'll get into later. Beading. This is a point to talk about because I did have to figure out how to work with this. I find best, again, I have oily skin. I will will rinse my face or cleanse my face in the morning, use a very light hydrator. With this, I find some of the Watermelon Glow Mist. Really, really nice because it's very lightweight. Maybe their Guava Vitamin C Brightening Serum, but I can't do a lot underneath this. I did have to figure out how to work with this because it does have a tendency to pill depending on what I put underneath this. So I have to do very, very little. That being said, I have a few other creators who I saw on Instagram talk about how they like to put this on damp skin or over a moisturizer because it works in better for them. One thing I did notice that I didn't do until today's application was I saw both Chris Christine and Sarah, the founders of Glow Recipe, they do a method where they kind of like spread it like you would frosting and then they pat it in like a like you would toner essentially. I tried that today and it actually was very, very helpful. And then for the hairline and beard, I just rub it in, no weird issues. For all the other creators that I saw post about it, I asked. Some of them were like, I had a little bit of issues with pilling, but not a lot. So it's not like a horrible, horrible issue. That being said, there's a lot of sunscreens that I personally like and I don't have pilling issues with that other people do. So I think it's just dependent on trying different things underneath. Third B, beat makeup. I'm actually wearing makeup right now, a little bit of a Fenty Matchstick and some bronzer and some setting powder. There's no issue, but I always 
with sunscreen and makeup, I always stipple the makeup on top so that I'm not disturbing the sunscreen underneath. Is the makeup radiant? Yes. Can you see my glow? Yes, but I powder and I'm perfectly fine. And I'll address this when I get to the frequently asked questions about the sunscreen, but again, this does leave you with the radiant glow, but if you powder this the right way with in the right spots, you can make it look very manageable for oily skin, no issue. This doesn't affect the wearer of makeup overall. I just think this preps the skin really nicely because it's a nice moisturizing base and your skin just looks really good. And then last B, brown skin friendly. And again, I'm caramel at best. I'm Fenty 290, number 10 in the eavesdrop. So I'm very mid tier. This melted into my skin looks fantastic, but I was weary about how it looked on deeper skin tones because this does have zinc oxide in it. Up until the point my ad went live, I did not know how it was gonna look on deeper skin tones. I couldn't get any footage or any application from anyone else because I didn't know who else was doing the campaign or who else had PR. So it wasn't until today that I'm filming this that I saw application on deeper skin tones. I reached out to the other creators, my friend Erin, AKA The Melanin Method, sent me application footage of what that looks like on her and how it applies. And honestly, I was very shocked. It melts into her skin. She is Fenty 420 for reference. So she's definitely up in the deeper shade range, but she's not the deepest skin tone. So I can't speak for obviously above Fenty 420, but it melts into her skin. She does concede the fact that it had to take a little bit of work to basically blend it into her hairline nicely, but that's nothing necessarily new to her. And it wasn't something that she had to put a lot of work in. She's like, it took me a minute and six seconds to work it into my skin. No issue. She did two fingers for her face and it looks really good on her. Overall, it is brown skin friendly to the extent. I'm not 100% sure because again, zinc oxide, it's an interesting filter. Once my friend Julian posts his review and his application footage, I'll link that down below in the description box. So if you're watching in the future, check there, but I can guarantee it works up into at least a Fenty 420. Let's talk ingredient formulation and all that stuff. So this is a 50 ml bottle. This retails for $34. So this is technically up there in price range. It's Glow Recipe. Their price point is a little bit higher. They are technically an indie skincare brand. I think people fail to realize that they're not underneath a L'Oreal and Estee Lauder. They're, they're their own they're company. And so they are indie. One of the things that I appreciate and one of the things that I want to factor into that is they create skincare that is enjoyable. When I talked to Sarah and Christine, Sarah made the point to say, we wanted to just develop a product, a sunscreen that people would actually want to use and really enjoy using and want to apply every day. So with that, obviously signature glow, but we wanted it to be fun to use and that it has a nice texture and that it has a sensorial experience behind it. It has a nice scent. Obviously this is part of the watermelon line. I will say this smells more like the body lotion than it does any of the other watermelon products. So if you're familiar with those, it doesn't smell like their sleeping mask, for example. But it took them three years to develop this product. It took a lot of iterations. Talking to some other brand owners working on sunscreen development, it's hard to develop a sunscreen. It's not like developing a moisturizer or a toner, especially when it comes to developing a product that is made in the US or made for US retail, which this product is, it's American made, as well as needing to obviously now live up to the pressures of you need to ensure and have the receipts and the documentation that your sunscreen has multiple third party tests to ensure it meets the advertised SPF, which Christine was like, we did test it with both ISO and FDA regulated tests. It did test above SPF 50. They did combination filters. So in that there's a zinc oxide mineral filter as well as chemical filters. Specifically, this features homosalate at 8.5%, Octosalate at 5%, and those are both EVB filters. Octocrylene at 8.5%, that is a UVB into longer wavelength UVA rays. And then you have zinc oxide at 12.1%, and that's broad spectrum with a good emphasis on UVA protection. So you're getting very adequate broad spectrum protection in this. And their thought with that was, we want this product to work for as many skin types and skin tones as possible. This kind of gave us an in-between. Mineral filter, better for sensitive skin types. We have chemical filters, which can be a lot more translucent on deeper skin tones. Also, the chemical filters we use have a better irritation profile. They're not as sensitizing to sensitive skin individuals. So the objective for them was this could hopefully tick as many boxes as possible with just one product. It is alcohol free, but it does have fragrance. Ingredient highlights, obviously the watermelon line. When they explain it to me, I'm like, that's genius because the story behind Glow Recipe is that they developed their watermelon line first. Their sleeping mask was their hero product in the beginning because as kids in Korea, their grandmothers would rub like the rinds of watermelon on their skin after they'd been out in the sun because it has very soothing and very cooling effect. And that's amazing to have in a sunscreen. And then you also have the ultra hydrating benefits of that. There's also niacinamide, it's in the name. You have hyaluronic acid, you have copper and zinc gluconate. And those are things that are going to aid in hydration and moisturization of the skin. Lactic acid in here, which was interesting. They said that's to kind of work with the niacinamide to help with texture and pigmentation related issues. There is definitely something worth noting about, I don't know what the pH of this is. So it's not going to be very, very strong lactic acid, which I mean, it's beneficial to have in a sunscreen. You don't want strong exfoliation, but I think it also might just lead more into the humectant and pH adjusting benefits of what lactic acid can do for a formulation. So worth noting. And then there's also aloe. So aloe, soothing, hydrating, nice to have in a sunscreen too. So now let's talk about some of the comments I got on 
my Instagram reel about people's thoughts and questions about the product. First and foremost, the price point and the size. Again, 50 mil, $34. It's not affordable by any means, but that is very subjective. And again, what Glow Recipe does is just make products fun to use. If they created a sunscreen that someone's like, I love the way this feels and smells and makes my skin look, it works great under makeup and I'm going to use it every day. I don't have an issue with that, especially when you have brands, Fenty, pretty much same price point. You have brands like Murad and all these other brands of Sephora. This is very comparable. I don't see an issue with this. It's just a matter of what's affordable to you. That being said, I do want them to come out with a jumbo size or even a body version of this because that would be incredible to have this kind of scent protection, this kind of glow and this scent all over your body because you know I love the smell of the body lotion and it smells just like it. Other point to talk about, why are they using such outdated filters? They're an American brand. They have to sell in American retailers and that's an issue where if you're selling in Sephora, you have to abide by what FDA allows you to sell in the US. And generally they have some of their products are Korean inspired, but everything they do is primarily made here in the US. This is a US made sunscreen. And plus with, again, all the SPF rating situations, they want it to be as safe as possible. So this is US made. And again, you have zinc oxide providing very adequate broad spectrum protection, first of all. And you have something like octocarline really boosting that up. Yeah, Korean and European sunscreens have really innovative filters that have much better irritation profiles and that they're much more sensitive skin friendly and whatnot. We just can't get those here. And that is in no way Glow Recipe's fault. But do note, this does provide adequate broad spectrum protection. It says broad spectrum protection on the bottle. And in order to get that designation, you have to comply with set standards set by the FDA for UVA protection. So next, you say it's great for oily skin. It's not greasy, but it looks very shiny on you. It's glowy. It is very glowy. It's not greasy. It's not very emollient. Black Girl Sunscreen, the original SPF 30, that is greasy. And this just has a very radiant finish. It's glow recipe. That being said, I am glow by Ramon. I love that look. Yeah, I have oily skin, but I manage that by just powdering. There's a certain expectation with people with oily skin and sunscreen where you want it to look a certain way. There's limitations to what a lotion, a cream can do for you, especially if you are oily throughout the day that skincare just can't do. It doesn't have that property. And that's where something like a translucent powder will do the work for you. Right now, again, I have this on underneath makeup. You see a glow, but I'm not greasy because I powdered. That is what I'll say to that. In terms of skin types, again, I think this works great for every skin type. This is moisturizing. So with oily skin, this is my moisturizing step. If you have dry skin, just prep a little bit more underneath. You can go in with their Plum Plum Hyaluronic Cream first and then go in with this afterwards, layer some of their toner or their niacinamide serum, for example, underneath this and really build up some of that hydration underneath the moisture. Play around with how you use this, but I'm very confident saying this can work for every skin type. I think the ingredients and the texture and the feel of it on the skin, it's not heavy. It's very elegant and it can work for every skin type. Sensitive skin, be wary, but they did say this was dermatologist and ophthalmologist tested to test for sensitivity and irritation around obviously the skin and the eyes. And then one last thing I will say is again, I've had this for a minute. So I don't know if something's changed in the weeks that I've had this versus now. And a lot of their advertising for the launch specified that this is water resistant for 80 minutes. Nowhere on my box does it say that. But again, this might just be an old box and they just didn't get it on this in time for when they sent out the PR versus when the launch is right now. So that is worth noting, but actually very interesting because it's a very elegant water resistant sunscreen, all things considered. And on top of that, in my mind, I don't know, it's American made, but in my mind, this is a Korean brand just because the founders bring a lot of that Korean inspired elements into the line. So I'm like a water resistant Korean sunscreen. That's amazing. And the last thing I want to talk about is the marketing behind this does say some stuff that I don't align with in my content or in my belief. And that is around reef safe filters. If you watch my Instagram reel, which again was an ad, I just state that the choice of filters they use in this with zinc oxide and the chemical filters was in order to create as inclusive as a sunscreen option as possible. Don't mention anything about the reef safety. Again, that's just because there is no scientific basis to really make those claims. Primarily I think Lab Muffin, AKA Michelle, just because she articulates this very well. She gives the receipts and I'm very lazy. So if I can just link to her, you can go to her, read what she shares. Fundamentally, again, the studies that do make these claims, they are very exaggerated, misinterpreted. There is not really a concern of UV filters affecting coral reefs, but especially when the damage that is being done to the reefs is primarily due to corporations. Blaming sunscreens is very much just a distraction tactic. So I'm gonna say that about that. But again, I chose to do an ad for the sunscreen on Instagram because I really enjoy the sunscreen. I really enjoy Glow Recipe. When it comes to some of these brands nowadays, marketing is huge and brands want to market to sell product. And right now that clean movement, that clean language is very in vogue. And so I will always make the claims as a, someone in the science community of pointing out what's fact and what's truth, but I'm also a consumer fundamentally. And so I enjoy using skincare. And so I will look objectively, do I enjoy this product? Why do I enjoy it? What's in the ingredients? And then let's look at the marketing afterwards. So I think this is a great product. I'm very elated. This actually looks amazing on darker skin tones. And I had a really positive experience with facial hair and makeup and everything else. So I think overall this gets like an B plus A minus. I love this sunscreen. I'm really happy they finally launched one. Let me know down below in the comments section. How
have you tried this? Are you gonna get it? Let me know. What other sunscreen products might you want Glow Recipe to launch? Sound off. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.